Yo, what the hell is that thing? So, you're telling me that you want to plop a 300 pound lizard max in the most competitive period in dinosaur history? Well, let's get into it, I suppose. So, Komodo dragons are the largest lizards alive today, with the largest individuals pushing 310 pounds. They live in some Indonesian islands, which is thought to be one of the reasons they were so big by being separated from the mainland. They have a selection of different things to choose from when it comes to food such as wild boar, deer, monkeys and even water buffalo. So I think by now most of us have heard that Komodo dragons kill using venom rather than bacteria since studies carried out show that the microbiome of the Komodo dragon's mouth wasn't that much different from that of other predators but it was shown that they had grooves along their jaws that suggests venom production from their glands. While it may be the most dominant predator in the islands that it populates today I don't even think it would be mid-tier in the late Jurassic ecosystem. I mean, this was one of the few points in history where many different large theropods of similar sizes competed for food and got into scuffles. But before we get into the mess that we're about to put Big K in, I'm going to do a brief touch up on this specific time period. The late Jurassic was around 145 to 160 million years ago and was dominated by ferns and conifers. It also had a multitude of different fauna from the 12 kilogram or Tionilla, I hope I didn't butcher that name, to the 20 ton Diplodocus. The climate was humid and mostly subtropical, so similar to that of the climate seen in the modern Indonesian islands. It would take 20 minutes or more of me telling you just how diverse the late Jurassic ecosystem was with all the different types of herbivores etc etc. So I'm just gonna look at the ones that the Komodo dragons could have possibly hunted. So these large mega herbivores like the Stegosaurus and different sauropods are a given no-no, since while the Komodo dragon had venom, I doubt it would affect these herbivores to any significant degree. As a matter of fact, I don't even know if it would pierce the skin. It probably would have to chew on it for a while, and I don't think anyone is going to allow that. Also, side note, I heard an interesting theory on Clint's Reptiles, which is a YouTube channel, which is cool since this guy is a biologist and does some cool videos with many different animals. But he said that the venom itself probably isn't what necessarily kills water buffaloes when bitten but rather the infections such as sepsis when the water buffaloes go into feces lay mud holes or water and the open wound is exposed to all the different type of bacteria in it. But let's say what the main media and studies say is true and the venom itself is what leads to death. This would allow the dragon to take on prey that it wouldn't be able to take on without it. But I do doubt anything over 2 tons would really be affected. So the prey I can see the Komodos most likely going after are things such as the Dryosaurus, Postnelia and Juvenile Camptosaurus. The Othnelia are around 60 pounds and are a good size for a Komodo dragon to overpower. The problem however is that they were much faster than the dragons, which have a max speed of around 12 miles per hour, so it would require an ambush. The Dryosaurus was not quite that fast but still faster than the Komodo dragons, and they weighed around 200 to 450 pounds, so it would be a bit difficult for a Komodo to overpower one easily. Keep in mind Komodo dragons do not regularly grow to 300 pounds. Since on average they are around 160 to 180. The juvenile Camptosaurus can be around 800 pounds or more, so this is one of the prey items that the venom would have to come into play. And with it being around the same size as a large water buffalo, this can take anywhere between 2 to 5 days. And this is also where we run into the first problem. In the Jurassic, there was no such thing as my food. Either be big enough to defend your kill, or turn tail and run when something bigger comes to take it. And for the Komodo, the last option would be the main one since a lot of the main carnivores were larger than it. The main top dogs for this time period were the Torvosaurus, Allosaurus, Ceratosaurus, Saurophaganax, and Impeterius, although this just might be a very large Allosaur. The two most common of the bunch were the Ceratosaurus and the Allosaurus, with the Allosaurus weighing from 1.7 to 2.5 tons on average, and the Ceratosaurus approaching 600 kilograms regularly. They both dwarfed the Komodo dragon's max weight of around 150 kilograms. Not to mention the really big hitters like the Saurophaganus that can approach more than 6 tons. These carnivores could even see the Komodo dragons as food, and both are faster than it already, so that's another EC on its own. And if the dragon somehow made a kill in the proximity of one of these theropods, its meal is gonna get taken away. The late Jurassic ecosystem was so competitive that many of these theropods often made up different niches of hunting as to ease off some of the stress of competition. Such as the Ceratosaurus which is thought to have hunted mostly near waterways such as lakes and rivers, 
since most fossils are found there, while others such as the Allosaurus and Torvosaurus hunted in more open areas such as plains and occasionally in the woodlands. But confrontation still would occur even with this, so the only way I could see a dragon surviving is to change up its entire niche. Which shouldn't be that much of a problem since monitor lizards are the most intelligent reptiles currently on the planet. I would imagine they would inhabit heavily dense woodland out of the territories of most large theropods, but in the territory where large dinosaurs such as sauropods lay their eggs and also where the hatchlings live for a while before they grow up. I can see it acting similarly to a lot of its smaller relatives such as the Nile monitors by raiding large dinosaur nests for eggs and taking down young dinosaurs in these woodlands during the growing stages. It would have some competition with other small carnivores such as Ornithalestes and Elophosaurus. The Ornithalestes weighs around 70 pounds on average, so it wouldn't be that much of an issue. But the Elophosaurus can weigh up to 400 pounds, which isn't that much bigger but still would cause it to be a rival if they met. But unlike the Ornithalestes, this dinosaur mostly specialized in hunting fast moving prey, so it wouldn't regularly compete with the dragons. The dragons themselves would be opportunistic, also scavenging on any carcass left by larger predators or those occurring by natural causes. Seeing how adaptable monitors are, I could see them standing a chance, and with the help of evolution, I can see them growing in size and shape over time. They could possibly evolve longer limbs and an enhanced respiratory system that would allow it to do short bursts of speed at around 20 miles per hour or more for faster dinosaurs. And it could possibly also be larger with the max weight now being around 450 kilograms to allow it to somewhat compete with some of the medium tier pteropods. With that being said, it could also just grow smaller to allow it to be a specialist of dinosaur eggs and hatchlings like Nile monitors today at around 60 kilograms, which would take it out of the competition almost entirely from most other carnivores in this period. But this is just my analysis on it. For all we know, they could not survive or they could possibly evolve to be the size of a megalania, or not evolve much at all. Let me know your opinions. Did I miss anything out? And do you even agree with my take on the topic? With that being said, subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss an update. Now with this in mind... Oh,